to pay for expensive cancer drugs in England is to continue for an extra two years. The Cancer Drugs Fund was due to finish next year but will now run until 2016 at a cost of £400 million. Well, joining us from our studio in Birmingham is Steve Evans, who has terminal cancer and has had those drugs before. Very good morning to you, Steve. It gives me great pleasure to speak to you again. Very good morning. Hello, Louise. Hello, Charlie. How are you both? <laughs> We're doing good, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for talking to us today. Um, we'll talk about how you are in a moment. Okay. Um, you've had these drugs, haven't you? Yes. Tell us when you had them and what it meant for you. Uh, earlier in the year, it was something that was referred to as second-line treatment. I'd already had my primary cancer treatment in 2011. I went into a period of remission, and when that ended, when the tumour regrew, um, they suggested a second-line treatment, a type of chemotherapy, taxotere, that wasn't normally associated with my condition. And that meant, for that purpose at that time, wasn't approved by NICE. But the Cancer Drugs Fund looked at the evidence and they were happy to approve its use. So I had taxotere and simply stayed alive. And stayed alive for much longer than perhaps you've been told? That's right, yes. Um, initially, the average life expectancy for someone with my condition, obviously, when they give you this information initially, they don't know how you're going to respond to treatment, was a year. And that was two years ago. It's good, isn't it? It's, it's really excellent. And you've enjoyed those two years. That goes without saying. Um, yes. We, we are... We have moved into the, the latter phase of the journey now, which perhaps we'll come on to, but, but yes, um, it's been a wonderful journey, full of love and all of my friends. It's just really been great. Mm. Um, so to hear this news today, for other people who were in your position then, and um, that the fund has been extended, that brings enormous hope to people, does it? It must do, mustn't it? But. Um, I don't understand the politics behind these things and I don't understand uh, how they're administrated. But £200 million sounds an awful lot of money, doesn't it? And it's over two years, so that's £400 million. The way I look at it, I think the way that, that, that people on my journey look at it is very simple. When you're told you have cancer, it's quite terrible. The first thing that you want to know is whether or not you can be cured. And when they say there's a treatment, the second question is, well, can I have it? And as long as the answer to those two questions is yes and yes, I had no idea where the funding was coming from. I just thought it was NHS. But can you imagine what would happen if somebody said, well, there is a treatment, but unfortunately, you can't have it. That would take us into a different world completely. So if the Cancer Drugs Fund facilitates a yes and a yes, well, then it's good. And the reason that it does that is because it, it's, I'm told, it, it, it requires the same amount of evidence, but it removes some of the time-consuming rigour that NICE requires, which means NICE can take a long time to give approval. CDF can give it within days, and that is the important thing. So although the money seems important, for me, it's simply the facility for someone to be able to make that decision quickly. Where the money comes from isn't really relevant, I would say, to cancer patients. Mm. Yeah, well, Steve, I mean, the way you talk about things, it, uh, you know, it brings it home to people. As you well know, you appeared on Breakfast before and you had a huge impact on our <laughs> audience. And uh, can I just, I just on, on everyone's behalf, just bring us up to date on, on what's happening with you. Charlie, when we met for the first time during that morning, apparently, according to my children, I became trendy on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I was a hash. <laughs> look at me. Do I look like a hashtag? <laughs> and I didn't know what that was. But I'm now on Twitter myself. And I have people actually follow me on Twitter. Nearly 2,000 people follow me. So to, to all of them, 
hello, really. <laughs> it's, uh, this is what I look like. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, you avoided the question there. Yes, with, with delightful definitely. aplomb, we would like to know oh. uh, w what's going on and how you are. All right. Um, I've had a very bad last three weeks. I know what you're going to say, and I know I don't look it, but that's the miracle of the NHS. My tumour has started to regrow and did so during the latter phases of the last chemotherapy treatment. It started to bleed, Charlie, and that's not nice. And what it did, it's formed into my esophagus and extended, it grew and blocked my esophagus. And that's as much detail as I'm going to give at breakfast time on a Saturday. But what it's meant, into hospital, very poorly, and treated by geniuses. Uh, they hit the, the tumour with radiotherapy. That stopped the bleeding. And it, it's cleared my esophagus slightly, so eating is possible again. But where it's taken us now, more psychologically than physically, is into the last phase of the journey. The cancer only has one purpose and that's to end my journey. And I know that's going to happen now. I, I thought it was going to happen about 10 days ago. But the prof said, no, um, the bleeding has stopped and you're going to be here for some time. But mentally, I'm now at peace. I I'm in that place where I'm relaxed. I've, I've let go of all of the pressures. I haven't given up. That will never happen. That will never happen. But we're in a place now where we're not going to have more aggressive treatment. We're just going to have care and we're going to enjoy a, a better quality of life for as long as it is. So, so that's where we are now. Um, Steve, you know, you have touched all of our hearts. It has been such a pleasure to talk to you again. And you, you just pass on so much optimism. We thank you for that. Thank you. Well, Louise, it's, it's, it's lovely. I, I, I would say, and I, I, people have asked me to do this, and I, and I, I, but uh, on Twitter, I have a, a Twitter name. Can I, can I give what it is? Is, the, is that permissible? It's Steve on Evans 1, so, isn't it? It's Steve Evans 51. 51. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's a way that people can follow our journey. And although, although those people are following it from a distance, it really makes a, well, it makes a lot of difference to me. I really like them being there. Oh, well, we have just had such pleasure talking to you. Um, I wish I could meet you in person, but thank you very much. And all lovely our thoughts, speaking to you. All our thoughts are with you and your family. Thank you very much, Louise. Speak to you again, Charlie. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye, Steve. Thank you. Puts things in a bit of perspective, doesn't it? Uh, let's catch up with the weather right now. Philip has it for you. Very good morning to you. I'm going to hit you with, with as much optimism about this weekend's forecast as Steve has managed about his circumstances. Yes, some showers in the south. Yes, some rain in the north. But most of you, look at this. Joy of joys. Sunny spells. Oh, better than that, perhaps. We bit.